Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is ITS 228. And today's uh, March 3rd. Uh, let me share my screen. And um, so if we look at the syllabus, we are, we're actually in this week but, um, and, and we should start trees today. I'm not sure when I'm, I'm gonna get to trees today because I do wanna, I do wanna go over assignment four. Yeah, I wanna go over assignment four. So maybe we should add two, did we have to go anyway? Um, and uh, cause I, uh, because that's hash tables and, and so that's on the previous chapter. So, so let's do that. Um, I just want to point out that if we look at the playlist this morning, I uploaded seven and eight. Seven and eight were not uploaded. The reason for that had to do with, um, I had to do some editing. Uh, but anyway, so uh, this video seven just covers the, the, um, the, the chapter on hash tables. So um, you can, if if you if you uh, you know click through the participation activities and so on, and, it, and it's fair, it's all clear to you, which you know probably would be, uh, then you don't really have to to uh, you know you maybe want to just zip through that, but you probably wouldn't learn too much. If you did have trouble with assignment two, I was kind of brief with assignment two up here, and so this video eight, which was last week. Uh, covers completely assignment two. So if you haven't, if you don't have assignment two done yet, then then that's a good video for you to watch. But if you have assignment two done, then you probably don't even have to open that that video. Uh, so and assignment three was covered. I, I've renamed this video. I've added assignment three here because assignment three is really covered in de quite de quite a lot of detail in video six. So this is video nine today, and I'm going to cover. Um, uh, assignment four. So if we go to assignments and we look at this, the assignments, <clears throat> uh, basically we take the Python ch chapter, the last chapter of chapter five, which is the Python chapter for hash, hash tables. And the first thing we do is we're going to implement the, the little demo that they have back there. And then we're going to implement one of the uh, important functions in hash tables um, that um, <clears throat> that you have to be able to do if you're going to, uh, you know, actually implement them for real, and that's this resize function. It's possible that the hash table gets to, gets to be too big uh, or too slow for various reasons, and uh, then you would want to resize it. So there's a re so so you, uh, the assignment, the second part of the assignment is to write the resize function in Python. And of course, it's given in um, pseudocode. And so you just have to translate that. And so that's what I'm going to cover today. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so you start by creating assignment slash four, copy the seventh file. Let's go to the seventh files. Oh, I have a nice link over here, textbook. And let's go to hash tables and let's go to the last chapter, last section. And we see this is, um, you know, Python versions of all of the uh, different kinds of methods that go along with, with uh, implementing hash tables. Uh, actually, you only need one of the probings, but, but in this case, we implement them all just, you know, for your practice. Uh, and at the end here, we get, uh, you know, this demo. And in fact, you can run the demo if you want to, let's run it. And basically what it does is it creates, um, it creates hash tables using all four of these um, methods for, uh, for implementing a hash table. And it has to do with when there's collisions. So when there's collisions, you know, you're, you're, you're either going to chain them 
or you're going to probe to find the next next available slot to to put an insertion and you can probe it linearly or you can probe it quadratically or you can probe it using this double hashing table um, method and um, so uh, here we see the chain for chaining it's uh, you know if, if both Tokyo and Los Angeles hash to bucket number two then they're chained it's chained same with Dallas and Chicago uh, and with um, but with with linear pro probing uh, if there's a collision you just go to the next one to try to find it um, and if it's quadratic if there's a there's an equation for probing to the next one. So anyway, so first, first thing we're going to do is implement that. Let me uh, go to assignments. No, let me go to uh, Richard H. Um, that I, uh, ITS228.com, Richard H. Yeah, that's so, you know, yours is, is what your user uh, name is in. And go to cPanel. It's nice, we, it's nice we can do everything in cPanel. You never have to log in using SSH or anything. Okay, so log in because because of the terminal. That's why the terminal app, which we're going to use this app. I'm going to open it up right now, open it up in a new link. So here it is. And right now, when we go, when we CD to assignments, we see. Um, we can do an ls dash l, and I've got a bunch of stuff here, uh, but I don't have an assignment for. I've got a, something I was working on there, but so so anyway, I'm going to go to um, uh, file manager. You know, I could actually do all this in, in the terminal, but I'm not going to. Uh, then I'm going to. I've already created my assignments folder, and so here I'm going to create a new folder called four. Um, and uh, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to create five. I wonder if I can. Well, I guess I'm just going to do this manually. Um, I'm going to put this. What is this? Um, I need to say that I need to do that. Um, so. So the the uh, the fold uh, the the uh, files are um, one. Okay, so uh, how can I? Oh, let me um, put this over here. That's what I was gonna do. this over here, and I'm gonna put and I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna put this over here. Uh, and go back to here and I'm down at the bottom here and I'm going to create all of these now what if that's going to stay it's probably not going to stay file oh my is hash tables demo dot py hash table Y and uh, chaining hash table py. Make sure you spell it just like that. Linux is case sensitive. DOS is not. Linux is uh, open addressing hash table. And you should you know go in and check out what all these things do. I might talk a little bit about it. Linear programming, I'm going to have to linear probing hash table dot py. Quadratic probing hash table dot py. 
and double hashing hash table py. Um, okay, so we have those files, and then we have to go in each one of them and copy the copy these ones. Oh, what is the? Okay, so so let's start. Well, the first one is hash tables demo dot py. I wonder if I can get rid of this somehow. No, uh, double hash tables demo.py. So I'm going to edit that. Edit. Open it up. And I'm going to copy this. Copy. Copy. Paste. Save. Uh, and I'm just going to close it because I don't want to know cluttered. And what's next? Um, hash table.py. Uh, hash table.py. And, you know, all these work. So when you see something like this here, uh, unlike uh, the previous uh, assignment, you know, uh, in the previous assignment, you would, you, you have to put code there. But this is a finished thing, and there, it has to do with inheritance. Uh, why these are there? Because they're actually defined in um, in a uh, they're defined they're they're um, they're overridden by the methods that include uh, or uh, that import this class. Uh, so let's uh, do that one hash table. Did I do it already? Edit. And I'm going to copy this whole thing. Let's do, let's see if this works. Control A, Control C, Control V, save changes, close. That's uh, hash table. The next one is chaining hash table. See here, here chaining hash table imports the hash table class from the one we just copied. And here is where those insert, uh, you know, search uh, and so on are, are implemented. All right, so this is chaining hash table. Let's go to chaining hash table, edit. And I'm going to go here, control A, control C, control D, save, close. And next one is open addressing hash table, select control A, control C, open addressing hash table, edit, edit, control V. Save changes. Let's open address. Okay, close. And then next one is linear probe, linear probing hash table. And I just copy this little bitty stuff here. Copy this, by the way, there's an error in this. Uh, so uh, it's linear probing, and I'm going to edit this. Edit, and paste, save changes, close. There's probably an easier way to do this. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what's next? Uh, quadratic, copy this, copy, open up quadratic, edit, edit, paste. Save changes, close. Uh, and the last one is double hashing hash table. Copy this. Copy. Double. Edit. Edit. 
paste, save changes, and close. Okay, I've done that. Um, where's my terminal? Okay, now when I do an ls-l, I should see my four, and I can cd into four, and I do an ls-l, and I see all of these, and I should be able just to run hash tables demo. So remember, it's Python 3. Just happens it's got to be Python 3 because Python, plain Python is Python 2, and we're doing Python 3 in this class. Uh, and the name of it is uh, <clears throat> hash tables demo.py. Enter. Oh, look, it works. Okay. Too bad there wasn't an error. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to try to take advantage of errors because uh, then I can show you what the error message looks like and how you figure out exactly what the error is by what the error message says. Okay, anyway, um, <clears throat> so this thing um, here uh, shows it was run starting here. And uh, here it shows the initial chaining table, just like when we ran it, you know, in the textbook, just like when we ran it here. And it looks the same. Okay, so now, great, looks like that works. I don't have the, um, I don't have the uh, um, uh, auto grader up yet. Um, so, so, you know, the auto grader is your SP22, oops, not that one, ITS228. This one, I don't have the number four up yet. Um, so anyway, uh, so I think, but we're, I think we're done with number one. Oh, oh no, no, we're not. We're not quite done with number one because there's a, there's a, there's a bug. There's a bug in that code. And uh, so I ask you here, uh, make sure your program runs and make sure you use Python 3, blah, blah. I, uh, this is what it should look like. Uh, see if this is what it looks like. Four. Test your program by changing the initial capacity. See, this gets, this gets you to look down in the code so you can look at it a little bit. The initial capacity assignment on line 17, change it from, from 11 to seven, okay? Run the program and notice that changing the hash table um, Okay, so, okay, the, the chaining hash table, <clears throat> Not a problem. Even though there's only seven buckets, uh, it can handle nine airports because it'll just chain, you know, chain it. But uh, the others should not be able to handle it because you're trying to put nine things into a into a hash table that only has seven buckets. So it's not going to be able to put in the last two, presumably. Uh, so um, so and so we should see that by changing this initial capacity. Well, if we go to initial capacity, which I believe was over in the other one, let's go to uh, initial capacity is in, um, it's in hash tables demo, it's in the program that we just ran. In fact, I'm gonna see if the, if the okay. <clears throat> Uh, and here, <clears throat> seven, I'm going to change this to seven, okay? And um, so when you change this to seven, uh, this is a argument to each of these. Uh, okay, so the way this program works is, is it actually has uh, four hash tables, okay? It's, it, it, and it's got a table, it's, it's got a list of hash tables. Okay, this, this is a list. See, it's defined by the brace, by the square square brackets. Yeah, brackets, they're called brackets, uh, not braces. Uh, and uh, it consists of this, this uh, an instance of the hat chaining hash table class, an instance of the linear pro probing hash table class, 
an instance of the quadratic program, pro, you know, whatever, and the double. And, uh, uh, and it, you pass in the initial capacity to each one. So that says the size of the hash tape, the number of buckets it's, it's going to initialize at. Well, you notice that linear programming has only one uh, argument, uh, whereas quadratic programming has, has um, three. If we go to linear probe hashing table, oh wait, first let me show you the bug. You gotta see the bug first. Get over here. Yeah. Oh no, okay, wait, wait. First I gotta change this. I change it to change it to seven, save changes. And now let's run it again. We can't make this bigger. Uh, that enter, and we see. Um, look, linear probe probing has got ten. All right, it's got eleven. It's still got eleven, uh, whereas the other ones only have seven because we, so chaining has seven, but it, but it's okay since it's chaining. It just you know goes ahead and chains more. Uh, linear programming, it, it, for some reason, it, it, it has 11. It has what the old one was. Uh, but quadratic has got seven and double hashing's got seven. And if you look at it, you, you, can, you can see that the last two that we try to insert in um, are not here. Um, so, so you insert those in. And then the reason it says after removal is because, because the way this demo works is it... Um, The way this demo works is it first it it inserts um it inserts um where do we ah uh, here 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 we insert um all of the key this is the keys you know these are the nine airports and the nine uh, airport codes. And so Los Angeles goes with LAX and Houston goes with IAH. And so, uh, so here, here we insert all of them. And then here we remove three of them. So anyway, that's what, that's what is, is shown here. So, um, so we see that there's an error there. So let's fix the error. Um, and I'm gonna look for you to fix the error now. I have reported this error, but by the way, let's go back to here and let's see what happens when we change this one. See, so we're able to change this one. Let's, oh, uh, okay, let's change, let's uh, change it to, to seven and run it. And uh, look, got the same error. Okay, well, the, the error is, uh, you know, I, I showed, I pointed out that it's got, this has only one argument here. Uh, if we go to linear probe hash, ha, uh, hashing, look, the, uh, um, the, um, the, the um, when it's created, it's, um, the, the constructor has defined three, but, but, but the reason there's no error is that, that it's defined defaults. And in fact, the initial capacity default is 11, which is why it's got 11. But it's got these other two things there. So the fact that we're passing in, the, reason, the fact that we're passing in this initial capacity value of seven, well, that's going right here. So C1 is being, is being assigned a seven. Well, look, C1 is not used, okay? C1 uh, is used here quadratic probe hashing look c1 c1 and here uh the probe function uses c1 and uses c2 it's got c1 c2 here so uh quadratic probing hash table does have three parameters uh but linear does not <clears throat> uh or Um, linear does not need three parameters. It, 
the first two, you know, but, but quadratic probing does anyway. So, so that's what's going on. So to solve, to solve this problem, you need to go back to here and go to linear probe hash table. In fact, I'll tell you what else. I'll, I'll, oh, I didn't mean to close. Did I really close it? I'll go back again. Um, you can go over here and you can fix it over here first. Linear probe hash table. And you can just take these buggers out. And now uh, when we run a hash tables demo as seven, we run it and we see linear probe. Now it just has seven. Now they all have seven. Okay, so, so that's what you're supposed to fix. Uh, that's this thing. And I say, if you notice it has a bug, the reason I say that is because it's possible that sometime during the semester, they'll actually fix that bug. In which case, if some, some latecomer uh, comes along and does the assignment um, the last week of class, no, there won't be anything like that. But uh, if, if, if that were to happen, if it, it, you know, you, that's why I said if, because it might get fixed. All right, so um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna implement this resizing thing. And the resizing thing is, um, <clears throat> resizing, hash table resizing. Now, the idea with resizing is, as, we've, as we saw with that example, when we, where we reduced the initial capacity of seven, um, you know, we wanted to put in nine things. And unless, unless the hash table can automatically resize somehow, uh, it's either gonna, you're either gonna lose the nine things or somehow it's gonna, you have to, say to reject it or something. Um, so, uh, so what they, what we do is we resize. And so um, when we resize, we have to do it. It's a sort of a brute force thing because if we change the size of the hash table, the hashing is gonna be way, is, is the hashing will be completely uh, different. Um, you know, the, uh, the keys, you know, the uh, cities, are going to hash into completely different buckets. So, um, so what you have to do is you have to, if like when we resize, uh, we create the new hash table and it's empty, and then we go through the old hash table one by one and we rehash them into the new hash table, and then we're done. And then the, the new hash table is now the hash table. And so uh, the question is though, when do you resize? Okay, well, first of all, there's there's the resize algorithm, and that's sort of this thing. That's just what I told you. You just create a new one, and you take the old one, and you go one by one. You, 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 know, you gotta go through all of them and rehash all of them. That's the algorithm, and uh, that's sort of shown here. Uh, by the way, one of the things you should, be, you should get out of this course is to be able to read the algorithm and, and then to write the Python from, from that. Okay, so somewhere along the line, I'm gonna test you just on that specifically. And it might not be worth that much towards your grade, but it'll be valuable for me to, to know if you are learning one of the um, student learning, the, you know, the outcomes, the course learning outcomes that you're supposed to get out of this course. So, um, so when do you resize, or when do you resize the hash table? A hash table with N buckets is commonly resized to the next prime number uh, above twice what the current twice what the current size is. So if the current size is seven, then what's twice seven is fourteen. What's the next prime number after fourteen? It's seventeen. So if we have a hash table of size seven and we're going to resize it, we would resize it according to this. We would resize it to seventeen because that's the next prime number after double what the current size is. Uh, and then we have to take, we have to go through the whole thing and take out, take out, take them all out, or we'll take them, we copy them, we, we rehash, uh, inserting them, we, we, we use the insert function uh, as many times as there are elements in the original hash table um, to, to get them all over there. And then we can just resume and we have a new hash table size. And so here's an example of this. 
you should click through this and see how, how it works. Um, and then when to resize? Well, there's a couple of things we can look at, or a few things we can look at this load factor. And uh, so what the load factor is, is how many buckets, how, how many items are in there uh, divided by how many buckets there are. And if that gets to be above like 0.6, then it's time to resize according to this. Okay, so, um, so that's one time you can do it. Is that all it says? Where does it say there's a bunch of them? Okay, um, I thought maybe I was reading that someplace else where you can also look at, there's a couple of other things you can look at, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, what we're gonna do, you know, we're gonna use a, a, a load factor. And what we're gonna do is um, when we start inserting in, let me find that code, is that the code I deleted now? Uh, Good, we still have this uh, file manager assignments for in in um, open addressing hash table, which is what if you look if you look back at here. Let's just look at this one. Um, uh, chaining, let's see, this, doesn't, this is not a good. Open dressing bucket. This is just the bucket. And this doesn't show any of the imports or anything. Okay, so um, let's just go down to here. The, um, um, linear probe hash table, quadratic probing hash table, and double hashing hash table all use this open addressing hash table class, okay? And so if we look at that one, uh, this, 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 this thing relies on the hash table, just the hash table class. But if you look at um, this one, no, if you look at um, linear probing at the very top, it uses the open addressing hash table. I'm saying it uses the open addressing hash table. Uh, that's linear. Quadratic uses the open addressing hash table. And double hashing uses the open addressing hash table. But chaining, I, chaining does not. Chaining does its own thing. Okay, that's because it's going to chain on. It doesn't. It, chaining, um, you know, you can resize with chaining. But general, but you don't need to because you can just the chains are chains will get longer. Uh, so, um, but in open addressing hashing, uh, you use you know if your table has got seven buckets, that's all the buckets there are. It's not like with chaining where you can just have as many buckets as you want. Um, so, so you do have to resize, and 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 all of these use this open addressing uh, hash table. Uh, these classes here, and so we're gonna, um, and so it's in here where we're where we are gonna add the um, the resizing method. And so let's start the assignment. Twelve fifty one. Um, this class goes to one fifteen. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we're supposed to do is create copies of the files of, of five of the files. Not we don't need to do do a chaining. We don't need to do hash table or chaining, um, but we do need to cop make copies of these files. Now, um, I think what I'm going to do here to sp speed this up is is I'm going to is, is is I'm I'm only going to make copies of of the files I need to to demonstrate the um, 
uh, the um, the resizing. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do, but that's not what you do. Okay, you have to you have to actually um, you know make a make copies of all of them and so on. Okay, so um, so and so why because i want to leave these the way they are they, i want i want to leave these the way they are because the auto grader is going to test those the way they are in one but then uh then your your modifications are going to have a two after after all of them all right so so i'm going to go here and i'm going to make a copy of hash tables demo i'm going to i'm going to make a copy of that copy and i'm going to call it hash tables demo two dot py and i'm going to uh, make a copy of um, i'm just going to use linear probe hashing so i'm um, so let me um, make a copy of this linear probing hash table now now you can watch this, but make sure. Oops, we have to put the two. Make sure you do the assignment as it says, and not like how I'm doing it here. Forgot the two. And uh, the third thing has got to be this open addressing hash table because that's the one that's that's being used by everybody. Open addressing hash table two dot py copy. Okay, so now from from hash tables demo two let's edit this and let's get rid of references to all the other ones because i don't want to get confused uh, but i don't think you do that you do the assignment but i'm just going to do this here uh, i don't need this one anymore and i don't need these two anymore <coughs> and but my linear probing hash table is going to be imported from from uh, my two file dot py file no, no, oops, oops, oops. From the, the import to dot py file, they should make you put dot py, then you won't get confused. Um, so I'll leave this here. I'll leave this here. Uh, tables, I, I don't need. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go down. Uh, I'll just do this one. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to get rid of all these. Kind of dumb, but you don't really need this thing. But I'll just do it that way. And um, tables, there's only going to be one. Uh, table names is there is no chaining, and there is none of these other ones. Okay, it's kind of dumb, but and so it goes through those, and then it, it so it it, um, it inserts all the keys, and then it deletes three of the keys, and it displays everything out. Okay, so I'm just gonna see. This should this should still work. Um, okay, wait, let me save this. Uh, I gotta make sure that. No, did I did I make did I fix that thing in here? Look at two. No, I okay. So fixing it. So here, here let me fix this. So yeah, you, you have to take this out, and initial capacity can uh, can still default to eleven, like all the rest of them, but. Uh, so, so that's the fix. This, this is the fix that you have to do in. In um, you need to make that fix in in this one also. So, you gotta make sure you do that. This is something you really have to do because the auto grader is gonna look for that. <clears throat> but other than that, we're done with the. We're we're only dealing with this one. All right. Um. So. Uh, that's fixed, and then um, so let's. So I'm going to try to run hash table demo two dot py, and uh, okay. So here we see it's just linear programming. Here linear probing. 
So here we ran it and we just uh, load up the initial table and um, you know, there's six and seven, whatever they were. Um, New York and Vancouver didn't get in there because there's no room for it. All right, so um, uh, so now let's add the this uh, resizing thing. Modify the insert method in this one. So when the load exceeds 60%, the size of the hash table increases as described in 5.6 of your textbook. The table's new size should be the next highest prime number after double the current size. And so if the current size is 11, it should double 11 is 22. And the next highest prime number after 22 is 23. So if it starts at 11, it should double to 20. It should increase to 23. And, uh, but how do you find the next prime number? Well, I'm not gonna make you have to do that. I just give you this method here. And so we're gonna, we're gonna find the right place to put this method so it works. And also, by the way, oh, look, this method is recursive. That's okay. Uh, but, but, but I might refer back to this method uh, um, uh, in, the, in, in future chapters when we uh, go over recursion again. So um, we're gonna, and, and so where do we put it? Let's go to uh, open addressing hash table two. Okay, now we can now we can look at this. Um, okay, this is a class that uh, um, that sort of defines a bucket. There's a bucket key and a bucket value, and uh, and then there's a method uh, which which um, will return true if the bucket is, at, is empty, okay? If the bucket is empty, no, no, I'm sorry, not the bucket. The, um, the, um, the, the, uh, the hash table. If the hash table is empty, then, then this method will return a true. Uh, if it's not empty, if, it, if, there's, if there's anything in the hash table, it's gonna return false. Um, we also uh, define these two special bucket types, and this is sort of a concept that's, um, um, it's different in different programming languages, but, uh, but basically it's a type of bucket um, that will be used, it's, that's named, uh, and, and this will be used uh, because, because to do this, this open addressing, um, uh, this open addressing uh, probing, uh, you need to um, you need to to know if you know as you're probing along, if you reach an empty bucket, you have to know whether that bucket is empty. Uh, uh, you you have to know whether that bucket has, has ever been filled before. Okay, you have to you have to know if that bucket has ever had anything in. Um, in it before, uh, uh, or if it's empty because it had something in there and then that thing was removed. The reason is because um, when you're inserting a new um, item, then um, and your your hash does not hit hit with with the first bucket, uh, then it 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 probes to the first open bucket. And then, but but uh, when you're looking for that hash again, um, you may uh, um, some of the or one or more of the buckets that were skipped over when the item was inserted may be empty. Uh, so so you have to so if you're looking if if you're searching for a particular key, um, 
um, and you're hashing, but you but you, but you keep colliding. Uh, if you come across an empty bucket that had something in it before, you have to keep going because because there could have been something in there when the item you're looking for was inserted, in which case it would have been skipped over. So anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do anything with this. I just want you to understand how this this uh, hash, how this open addressing hashing works, and and that you have to be able to distinguish between a bucket being empty because because there was something there before and now it's empty again, or a bucket being empty because there was never anything in there. Okay, and you have to keep track of that with every um, with every bucket. All right, so. Uh, here is the actual uh, ha open addressing hash table method that, that all three of them use. And uh, so when we initialize it, uh, we have this initial capacity value that comes in and it can be 11 or it could be seven or whatever we, whatever it was set to up in, in demo. And this thing sets every, um, uh, Locate or item. Well, actually, this is lit. This is Python. So we're so we're actually initializing here. Um, this defines a table that is this has this many elements, uh, and and each element contains this. Uh, it's actually a link. It's an address to this bucket, this empty since start bucket. Uh, this one here. So basically, what this thing does is it initializes a new table of size, initial capacity, and each element in the table is a, an address or a pointer, or basically you know, contains, is a, a reference to empty since start, okay? So that means the whole thing's empty and there was never anything in it, okay? Okay, here's this probe, uh, this probe method, and, and that's actually taking care of um, this, you, you need to be able to refer to it down here because you need to be able to probe when you're looking for a place to insert a new key value pair. You know, when you're looking for a place to insert, you need to probe, but probe is actually defined up above, uh, depending on if it's linear probing or quadratic probing or double hashing probing. Uh, that's, that's defined up in the method which has imported uh, this method this class, that's up in the class that was imported this class. Um, so anyway, that's why it can be a pass here. We don't have to do anything with that. Uh, here is the, um, the method for inserting a new element in. And so this thing would cause the size of the table to increase. Um, not always though, but wait, uh, inserting, let's see. Um, no, it may not because if you're trying to insert something that where the key is already in there, it's going to update it. It's going to update the value instead of inserting a new key because there can only be, be one key. So the first thing this insert method does is it searches to see if it's in there already, if the, the key is in there already. If it is in there already, then it updates it. See, it just updates it here. It's, it found it, so it updates it. Uh, here, um, okay, it updates it and then it returns. Okay, so it's done, it exits out of this thing. So we're all done inserting. If this does not execute, then we, we continue on and we want to find the first empty bucket. Uh, it could be just, just the, direct, the direct hash, but uh, uh, we want to find the first empty bucket uh, past what we've already, no, we're starting over again. Okay, so so we start back at the beginning, uh, looking for the um, uh -oh, we're hashing. We want to we want to find the the bucket index, the hash the hash function, bucket index for for whatever the key is, and um, it it continues this for loop, you know, zero, one, two, three until. It um, you know each time using this probe function until it finds an empty one, uh, and so as soon as it finds finds an empty one, it's it's able to put it in there, and that's what this 
That's what this thing does. This this creates a, 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 a new bucket instance with the key, this key value pair. It, I mean, this is the class. So this creates a new instance of this class up here. And um, and uh, sets this bucket so it it uh, addresses this new this uh, this object. This is an object, and it returns true. So that's done. If it um, if it is not in there, and it cannot find an empty bucket. Then it just returns false, saying, "Sorry, yeah, yeah, you wanted me to insert this key value pair, but there's no there's no space, so it'll return false." Okay, so, so that's that's the end of the insert method, and then there is the remove method, and this this searches this searches to find it, and if it finds it, it um, does it return it? No, it doesn't return; it just removes it. Okay, so if it finds it, then it just just re removes it. And here it sets it to, it's, it sets uh, the bucket to uh, empty after removal, which means it's empty now, but there used to be something here. And so, so what that's for is, is when you're searching for something, uh, you're gonna call the probe the hash probe function to find the bucket and it's gonna look at the bucket. And if the bucket is empty since the start, in other words, if there was never anything in that bucket or in this, uh, in this bucket index, then we know that the, that the key um, is not in here, okay. Uh, you know, we've, we've searched and we don't have to, to search anymore because each time we, we we're doing this linear program, probe it, this linear probing, and we find the, uh, we're probing, you know, something there, something there, and then we find a, a, a bucket, we probe and we find a bucket that's been empty since the start. Well, if, um, uh, then we know the, the key was never in there. Um, um, so, 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 so we return none saying it's not in here. Uh, but if the item is, um, or if the bucket, you know, as it's probing, if it uh, is not empty since start, then it, it goes on and it, it looks, and if it's not empty after removal, okay, that means there's something in there Okay, it, it it wasn't this, and it's not this. That means you know there's there is something in there. Okay, the thing about this, the thing about this table is there is something in every bucket index. There's either a key value pair, or there's this thing, or there's this thing. So it's always filled. It's either filled with items, or it's it's filled with something pointing to this one, or something pointing to this one. And so that's why you can do it this way, where um, when you're searching for something, if, if, if it's not this and it's not this, then there must be something there. And and so that that thing uh, that thing there is either going to be equal to the key or not. If it's equal to the key, then we found the value. If not, then we just then we um, This says we we continue on, but we aren't gonna. Oh, it'll return none. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so if it loops back again, it'll return none or that or. All right. So so it'll finish. It'll finish this for loop, and it'll never have found it. it it'll never. Uh, it, it'll never uh, be here. So it will return none because it's not in there. All right. So that's this code. Where do we put the insert? Uh, where do we put the um, uh, the the resize? Well, um, 
I think the, the place to put the resize is after you insert, after this insert function, uh, whether you inserted anything or not, uh, this is where you would have inserted something No, no, no. Um, when you go into the insert method, this is going to see if it's already there. If it's already there, it's going to be taken care of in this shaded uh, bit of code and return. Okay. If it's not there, then it's going to drop down to here, and this is where this is where it is inserted. So I think right here, uh, right here is where we check. We check the load. We we check uh, the the size of the um, how many items are in the table. We count up how many items are actually in in the hash table, and we divide that by the initial capacity of the or the size of the hash table. And if that's over sixty percent, then we will resize. Okay. So key is not in table. So okay, so key is not a table. So insert in first empty bucket, but first check to see if the table needs uh, needs to be resized. Okay, so um, so uh. So we're going to do that in here, and then here is when we're going, where we're going to um, insert uh, um, key value pair into first empty bucket. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to think of this. And um, so let me see. I have some. I have some notes here. Where would my notes be? It would be. Open address to. Pretty close to the end here. Um, so the uh, so right here is where I'm going to um, say resize if load is greater than greater than sixty percent. Uh, and so uh, and here is where I can insert this prime define I can insert this right here because I'm going to use this I might as well put it in here now uh, so I'm going to put this in here now paste dun, dun. okay uh, so so as long as it's uh, we're just defining something here, it's not going to execute. That's fine. Let's go back to here and here. Uh, so okay. So the first thing I have to do is I have to uh, uh, um, figure out how many items are in hash table. Okay. So I'm going to say. Uh, so, so, so I'm going to count up the filled items. Filled, uh, I'm going to say filled bucket equals zero. I'm going to say um, for every node in the table, if, and I'm going to take advantage of this is empty method here, if the node is empty, 
Oh no, okay. If it's if that's equal to false, then that means it's not empty. That means um, fill. I want to say I'm going to call it fill buckets. I'm going to call it fill buckets. Filled buckets. Uh, and okay, so. Now I know how many filled buckets there are. It's going to be whatever this value ends up being. Okay, so this should be node. Okay. Um, so, and I think I'm going to print this just because I want to print. Um, Filled buckets equals filled buckets. All right. Um, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna take this one step at a time and I'm gonna execute these this thing one step at a time and I'm gonna see what happens here. See what happens when I run this. Does it say? Is it print out? Yeah, why didn't it? Oh, oh, insert, insert, ins search, and then insert. So it should actually print out, and I wonder why it did not do that. Okay, insert, the first thing it does is it sees if it's in there, it's not. Then it checks to see if this is, then it just defines this function, which is okay, it doesn't, it can put that anywhere. And then I do for self table, if the node, for each node in, in the table, if it is uh, empty, well, yeah, if it's, well, if it's if it's not empty, then add up the filled buckets. And here I want to print it out. Okay. The 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 problem I see is that. This is this is the program I'm calling. It uh, it looks at that that Python file, which is this one. .py, and here I need to be looking at open addressing here, table two. So that's what that's the problem, because that's what this file is. So I was looking back at the old one. So let me save this, and let me try to run this again, and we see that. Okay, after each one, after each insert, this is where we run it. After each insert, it says it counts up the number of buckets. And so the first time, the first time before it inserts anything, it's got zero filled buckets, all the way up to six filled buckets to seven filled buckets. And um, I wonder why it says seven. It should only go up to six. No, 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 seven, seven filled buckets. Uh, but then uh, when it tries to, it, it, it's got seven filled buckets. This is before it does the insert. So it tries to insert. It doesn't insert because the next time around, it still has only seven buckets uh, filled. There's no eight and then anyway, so on and so on. So, um, so that's what that does. And uh, let's see, I got to check when my, it's 115, my next class is 245, I think. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna keep going here. I'm as well finish this. This is gonna be a long video. But... Okay, um, 
Uh, let's see, where were my notes? Okay, so, um, and so we've got, um, so uh, we have filled buckets and now we want to find out how many, how many, what the filled buckets is that? And um, so let me do this. Uh, capacity, uh, load, call it load. Load is equal to filled buckets divided by the size of the table, len of self table. Okay, that's what the load is. So I'm gonna say filled buckets is that. Um, I'm just gonna say uh, load equals load. Okay. So I'm gonna save this. Let's see what this what happens now when I run this. Well, there's an eight. Okay, so uh, we would we should uh, resize uh, here. We should resize right here. When there's five filled buckets, that's what the load that's what the load is, and that's over 0.6, and so it should be sized. Okay, so um, so if if load is greater than 0.6, then we're going to resize. Resize. I'm just going to put that there. Now, how do we resize? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to uh, create a copy of the table because I want to keep because I'm going to change self dot table. Um, uh, so, so, so I'm going to copy over self dot table and then I'm going to empty out. You know, okay, I'll just show you how to do it. Okay, so first I'm going to copy. I'll just do it this way. Uh, temp table equals self dot table and the method to do this is copy the copy method and this is um, create a copy of self of current hash table okay and then I'm going to um, uh, figure out what the what the new size should be. So I'm going to use this next prime function. I'm going to say new size is equal to this next prime function that I just imported up above there. Prime next prime of the length of self dot table, the current size of the table. And I guess I could do could do either temp table. Uh, the length of self table times two. Yeah, so I take the length of self table, multiply it by two, and I want to find the next prime number after that. And that's what that's going to be. And um, so then I'm going to empty out self table, self table um, dot clear. Okay, that's going to erase everything in self table. It's going to all be empty. And then I got to do the same kind of initialization that I did up here. Right here, I got to do this kind of deal here. There we go. I'm just going to copy this dude. I'm going to go down here. It's inside insert. Right here. Except for it's not initial capacity anymore, it's new size. It's this thing. So this is gonna initialize the whole thing as uh, the, the blankety blank again. 
And then I like, and then I got to go through every um, bucket in in temp table. So or uh, and so I. So I'm gonna index through it because I wanna look at each bucket and, and I'm gonna look to see if it's empty. If it's empty, uh, um, no, if it's not empty, then I'm gonna copy it over. Otherwise I'm gonna leave that bucket alone. So I'm gonna index through it. So I'm gonna, uh, I uh, in the range of the old table, okay, in the range of the old table, uh, if temp table um, of I, no, if temp table of I, if that bucket is empty, uh, no, if it's false, then it's empty. In other words, if there's something in it that needs to be transferred over to the new one, then let's grab out the key. I want to call it key one equals temp table of key. So I got to grab out the key and um, Oh, I grab out the key uh, because I got to figure out what the hash is. Oh, I grab out the key because I have to find the first empty bucket. Okay, so uh, that's the key. So now I'm going to go through the new table for I, uh, for J, I'm going to use J in the range of the length of uh, self self dot table. Okay, I'm I'm just sort of copying. Um, just. I'm actually just copying like this code up here. I want to do the probe. I'm going to probe it. Uh, let's see. And the way I do that is, I, is I'm looking for a new bucket index is equal to self.probe of key one comma j see so it's it's just like it's it's like this uh four i in the range and uh you're you're looking for this is the key you're looking for the first um index um you know the first index where uh, no 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 this is not this does not loop through the indexes. This, this loops through starting with zero, one, two, um, in case there's a collision. In most cases, it's gonna hit the first time because the, the hash function is so good that when you do a probe on the hash function, it's gonna, it's gonna um, hash to, to an empty bucket. So this for loop is gonna, most of the time it should only execute once, but when it starts getting filled up, there's going to be more collisions, and so then it has to, has to execute more. The loop will execute more than once. Okay, so so that's what this is. We're we're looping through. Uh, we we want to count starting with zero, what this is going to be, and hopefully we hit. Hopefully this probe um, finds an empty bucket for key one uh, when j is equal to zero, because then it's a perfect hash function. If not, if not, there's a collision, then it goes on to, to j equals one, and then it goes on to j equals two and so on. So this is, this is a, a bucket index that, um, uh, so, so this is the, the hashed bucket index. And now we have to see if that 
if that bucket of the table is empty. So here's where we do if self dot table of this new bucket index that it just hashed, hashed us back. Uh, is that empty? If is empty, um, if it is empty, then we have a place for this. For, then we have a place for the, um, for this um, item that was in the old hash table. So we just go, uh, the new tape, the new item, the new hash table is gonna put it right here. Okay. Index uh, equals uh, this. It's not it. There's, a, there's an item in there, and this is where we're going to put it. So, um, right. Okay. So, so that 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 that. Um, so now the new now this this uh, temp table thing. So it's going to loop through all of the temp tables. It's going to loop through um, all of the locations in the table. Uh, and if there's something there, then it's going to find, it's going to hash it into the new table. And this thing hashes it into the new table. And once it's hashed it into the new table, it can exit the current for loop and go to the next one until it's looked at every single um, bucket in the table uh, to see if there's something there. So right after this, we can just exit or break. Okay, so this breaks out of this current for loop and it goes to the next one. And when that's done, um, I think we're done. When uh, when this for loop is done, then we're done um, done uh, resizing. I'm going to call it resizing to a new table. So now we have a new table, a new resized table. Um, all right, so uh, when I um, insert, here is where I'm going to, here, here we, um, okay, so when this for loop executes, if the table has been, has been resized, it's going to be, it's going to be looping with the new, um, the new table. So this, this is going to range, uh, now we're talking about the new table and, but really it's the same kind of thing. We aren't looping through the table. We're trying to, um, match this key value, which was, which was this, you know, key value up here. It's we're we're trying to hash the key value that we were originally trying to hash into this new table, and that's going to come out here into this bucket. And and if it's empty, it's going to insert the, the new item into the new table. And so, so I'm going to put here print um, insert um, key, um, and I'm going to do this put value there also, uh, into a uh, new table uh, size, and I'm just going to put the size because I want to put the size, and I'm going to do a len table self because I just want to see what the new table size is. Okay, so this ends up. All right, so so just before it inserts, I want to say what, what it's inserting and I want to say what, see what the size of the new table is. 
So I'm gonna save this and let me go to, um, let me run this. Okay, oh, we'll look at the tables bigger, that's nice. All right, so here's where we run it. And we start out, um, we insert Los Angeles into a table size seven, we insert Houston into a table size seven, Washington, Chicago, San Francisco into a table size seven. Uh, and then we say, uh, the, look, the load is here. And then we're gonna insert, okay, so in, in between here and here, we resize the table. If I say that, I should say resizing table or something. But it, but anyway, by the time it it came time to insert Dallas, we have resized the table, and now we're inserting into a table size seventeen. And then we insert to Tokyo into a table size seventeen, and we insert New York into a table size seventeen, and Vancouver, and so on. And this is what it looks like when it's done. And then we. Now, um, yeah, so this, should, so this should have everything in there except for the first three, because it removes the first three. The first three are LAX, Houston, and Washington. So there is no, there should be no LAX, Houston, or Washington. All right, um, you know, I think that's enough. Uh, I have... I pretty much um, I pretty much covered everything that you need to know uh, to be able to finish this second part of the assignment. Um, the uh, but make sure you go through it and and are doing the assignment and not necessarily what I did here in the video. Uh, and the um, the auto grader should be up in the next uh, maybe by the weekend, a couple of days from this video. So I hope that helped and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.